Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to San Diego and the commissioning of United States ship Rafael Peralta. I am Commander Aaron DeMeyer, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. We are honored to not only commission our ship in San Diego, but to call this magnificent city our home port. The relationship between the Navy and San Diego began 113 years ago with a small coaling station, which serviced a growing West Coast fleet and has grown into the home of the second largest Navy base in the United States. We thank you for joining us today and for welcoming our families into this beautiful community. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Rafael Peralta, the 65th ship of the Arleigh Burke class of guided missile destroyers. The ship before you was christened in Bath, Maine on October 31st, 2015. She was launched a day later and completed a series of trials in October, November, and December of last year, including her very first live firing events on the anniversary of our namesake's brave final act. She was officially delivered to the Navy on February 3rd of this year. Today, she's complete, and our crew is proud to serve on the newest guided missile destroyer in the United States Navy. We are dedicated to carrying out the legacy handed down to us by Sergeant Rafael Peralta, a United States Marine Lava Dog from 1st Battalion, 3rd Marines, who distinguished himself in Operation Phantom Fury in Fallujah, Iraq, by sacrificing his life selflessly for his unit, for which he was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross. The ship's motto, Fortis et Finum, embodies both the history of the United States Marines and the personal character exhibited by Sergeant Peralta himself. This ship's crew is honored to carry this legacy forward and the ship which bears his name. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first ship in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, colors will be presented by the Wounded Warrior Battalion West and USS Rafael Peralta Color Guard, the Navy Band Southwest, and Naval Air Station North Island Saluting Battery will render honors to our senior official, the Honorable Susan Davis. The national anthem will be performed by Ms. Amy Scruggs. Ship's company, a Ted, hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Lieutenant Commander Alan Fleming, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, Destroyer Squadron 3-1 Command Chaplain. Captain Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Manager, DDG-51 Shipbuilding Program. Mr. Tom Garcia, Co-Chairman of the USS Rafael Peralta Commissioning Committee. Captain Joseph Toot, United States Navy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Back Maine. Mr. Paul Denyer, co-chairman of the USS Rafael Peralta Commissioning Committee. Mr. James Sheridan, vice president and general manager, Lockheed Martin Rotary Mission Systems. Captain David Bretz, United States Navy. Commander, Destroyer Squadron 3-1. Ms. Karen Sarahi Peralta, sister of Sergeant Rafael Peralta. Ms. Isela Peralta, sister of Sergeant Rafael Peralta. Mr. Ed Kenyon, DDG 51, Class Program Manager, General Dynamics, 
Bath Iron Works. Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Ms. Gloria Valdez, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Ships. The Honorable Kevin Faulkner, Mayor, City of San Diego. Vice Admiral Nora Tyson, United States Navy, Commander, United States Third Fleet. Vice Admiral Thomas Roden, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Forces. General Robert Neller, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. The Honorable Scott Peters, United States Representative, 52nd District, State of California. The Honorable Duncan L. Hunter, former United States Representative, State of California. The Honorable Daryl Issa, United States Representative, 49th District, State of California. Mr. Ricardo Peralta, brother of Sergeant Rafael Peralta. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Rosa Maria Peralta, our ship sponsor, escorted today by Command Master Chief Herman Lira, Command Master Chief USS Rafael Peralta. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Susan Davis, United States Representative, 53rd District, State of California, escorted by Commander Brian Robota, Prospective Commanding Officer, USS Rafael Peralta. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors for the Honorable Susan Davis. Platform, hand salute. <laughs> Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Scruggs, for that beautiful rendition. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Commander Fleming will deliver the invocation. Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. And God, we thank you for the gift of life. And Father, your son taught and modeled the truth that greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And today we're humbled by the self-sacrificing love and courage lived out by Sergeant Rafael Peralta. We would ask that our lives also would be characterized by love and courage and that those with whom we serve would be better for having known us. Today it is my prayer that as men and women breathe life into the P-ways and spaces of this mighty warship, that they will hold dear the example and legacy handed to them by their brother in arms. May this ship and its crew project the power and determination that are necessary for peace and freedom to reign. Let this crew be honored to bear the name USS Rafael Peralta, for it is the name of an American hero. And our Father, we boldly ask your presence on this occasion. May your providence forever keep this ship and the crews that man her rails. And now I ask this in your strong name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Fleming. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kevin Faulkner, Mayor, City of San Diego. Well, thank you, and good morning, everyone. It is an honor and, and so privileged to be with all of you today for the commissioning of the USS Rafael Peralta. And it's also so wonderful to be here among so many people who care deeply about our military, our veterans, and our great city. I want to thank Rosemary Peralta for being here today, the entire Peralta family. I want to thank everybody who was involved in our Peralta Commissioning Committee, the tireless effort and all of the work that you have done to get us here to this beautiful morning here today. San Diego is a great city, but it wouldn't be what it is today without our United States military. 
our servicemen and women, our veteran community. We can never fully thank them for their service, but we can and we will uphold their service and their memories. And that's exactly what we are here to do today. We honor our fallen heroes in ways that are big and small. I think all of us can agree that this is a fitting honor for a man who made the ultimate sacrifice. Raphael made the ultimate sacrifice to protect his fellow Marines. And now, this beautiful ship, USS Peralta, will protect countless service members across the globe. There is no more fitting legacy than to have the name Marine Corps Sergeant Rafael Parata on the side of this vessel. Courageous to the end. This is the message that will carry USS Peralta wherever she sails. And Sergeant Peralta was a true hero, and as I think all of you know, a hometown hero. He was born in Mexico City, but called San Diego home. And after graduating from Morris High School, he couldn't wait to join the Marine Corps. And er even at his earliest days of service at the Recruit Depot, it was obvious that Rafael's devotion and duty inspired him to serve. His enthusiasm, his love for family, his energy, that was who Rafael Peralta was. And it is because of his sacrifice, his patriotism, and courage, and it is because he chose service above self that we live in the greatest country in the world. And through Sergeant Peralta, we was taken, and though he was taken from us too soon, one thing is certain. He was courageous to the end. And wherever this vessel sails, his story will be known. It is an honor to welcome all of you here today for this commissioning. Thank you for supporting our military community and bringing USS Rafael Peralta to fruition. God bless each and every one of you, and welcome. Thank you, Mayor Falconer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ed Kenyon, DDG 51, Class Program Manager, General Dynamics, Bath Ironworks. Distinguished guests, Commander Roboda, and crew of the Rafael Peralta, family and friends, good morning. It's a privilege for me to represent the 6,000 men and women at Bath Ironworks at this commissioning ceremony this morning. Our nation has been building ships on the shore of the Kennebec River in Maine for over 400 years. And for the ships built in Bath, Maine, they've developed a reputation during those centuries around the world that Bath built is best built. At Bath Ironworks, we've been building ships for 133 of those years, and we recognize that we are the current chapter of that legacy and strive daily to be worthy of that reputation by demonstrating our commitment to safety, quality, schedule adherence, and improving our cost performance. DDG 115, the Rafael Peralta, is the 35th ship of the Arleigh Burke class of destroyers that's been built in Bath. It represents scores of thousands of hours of engineering, design, and planning, ship fitting and welding, miles of pipe, cable, ventilation, insulation, and paint, and a robust test and activation program to produce the ship that we are proud to present this morning as Bath built. With me today are two of the shipbuilders that led the construction of this ship. And on behalf of all the thousands of men and women at Bath Ironworks that handcrafted this magnificent vessel, I would please ask Terry McGovern and Brian Goss to stand and be recognized on their behalf. Thank you for what you do every day. And in closing, I would like to speak to the crew and reiterate the message that I shared with you in February on the day that you took custody of the vessel and moved aboard. When the day comes that this Rafael Peralta is called to go into harm's way, go boldly, drive fast, fight with all of your might. This ship will not fail to answer the call 
because it's bath built. Godspeed to the men and women of the Rafael Peralta. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kenyon. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Thanks, XO. Mrs. Peralta, you have a beautiful ship, and I believe your son, Rafael, and your husband would be very, very proud. You honor us with your presence today, and we thank you. Representatives Davis, Peters, Hunter, Asa, General Neller, distinguished platform guest, fellow flag and general officers, Captain Robota, and the crew of the soon-to-be USS Rafael Peralta. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'd also like to extend a very special welcome to the Peralta family, especially his sisters, Isela and Karen, and his brother, Ricardo, friends and shipmates of Sergeant Peralta, and certainly the many, many Marines that served with him that are here today. Thank you all for being here this morning. I would also like to again acknowledge the tremendous work of the Commissioning Committee and recognize the extraordinary hospitality of the people of San Diego, Coronado, and the surrounding communities. You supported our Navy so well over the last many years, and we thank you for all you've done to make this week special for the Rafael Peralta and her crew. The Arleigh Burke class destroyer is arguably the most successful surface ship construction program for the U.S. Navy and the Rafael Peralta is the 64th DDG-51 class ship overall to be delivered to the Navy with eight more in construction. With the most up-to-date command and control and combat system at sea today, this much improved combat capability make Rafael Peralta the most capable world warship in the world, period. The sustained success of this program is a living testament to the vision, the perseverance, and the leadership of Rear Admiral Wayne E. Meyer, the father of ages. Anna Mae, your presence here today means so much to us. Thank you for being here. This morning, through one of the most time-honored traditions of the United States Naval Service, we come together to welcome our newest destroyer into the world's greatest Navy and to recognize those who have brought us to this point in time. Our ship's namesake, Sergeant Rafael Peralta, a Marine's Marine, loved his family, his corps, and above all, his country. Sergeant Peralta personified the Navy and the Marine Corps time honor values of honor, courage, and commitment. The honor of his actions to join the U.S. Marines and serve his country. The mental and physical courage to take on a mission and face down the enemy on that fateful day in Fallujah his unyielding commitment to things that were important to him defined how Sergeant Peralta lived his life, especially his commitment to his family, his fellow Marines, and his country. These values, honor, courage, and commitment are part of Sergeant Peralta's legacy, a legacy that provides an example for all of us to emulate. Then there's the phenomenal team that designed and built this ship a team that collectively exhibits those same values of honor, courage, and commitment in working tirelessly to build the magnificent warship that we see here today. And although not clearly possible to mention all responsible for the construction of this ship, I'd like to acknowledge a few key members representative of the larger team. From the Navy, the Navy's DDG-51 program office, led by Captain Casey Moten and his deputy, Ms. Lisa Radoka. The Navy team that works shoulder to shoulder with the shipbuilder on the waterfront in Bath, Maine, is the supervisor of shipbuilding, led by Captain Joe Toot and his deputy, Mr. Bob Footer. I also want to acknowledge our industry partners, from Bath Ironworks to our systems and equipment suppliers across this country, who have put millions of hours of their skill, drive, and passion into this great ship with honor, courage, and commitment. I could not be more proud of the work that this team has done in building this ship for our Navy and for our country. Well done, folks. And to our ship's sponsor, 
Mrs. Rosa per Maria Peralta, you have imbued this ship with your spirit, a spirit that you passed on to Raphael that now resides in this great warship with honor, courage, and commitment. Your example will guide and inspire her over calm waters and tumultuous seas. Maria, many, many thanks. And today, most importantly, the crew. Captain Robota, you and your crew stand ready. The team has built you a great ship. Mrs. Peralta has instilled her with her indomitable and gracious spirit. You have built a solid team with honor, courage, and commitment. This ship, Rafael Peralta, will take the fight to the enemy and carry with her the name and the spirit of Sergeant Peralta wherever she may sail. Captain, as you prepare to meet the unknown challenges ahead, please know that you sail forward with the hopes and the prayers of a grateful nation. You are ready and you will make a difference. Courageous to the end. Godspeed, Rafael Peralta. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Galinas. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Gloria Valdez, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Ships. To our sponsor, Senora Rosa Peranta, Representatives Davis, Hunter, Isa, and Peters, Specialist Fourth Class Baca, General Neller, the Peralta family, Mrs. Mansour, our commanding officer, Robota, officers and crew of Rafael Peralta, distinguished guests, and to all of you who have come to San Diego today to witness this awesome commissioning of the magnificent ship, a very good morning to you. As we celebrate today, it's an honor for me to be here representing the Acting Secretary of the Navy, Sean Stackley, at the commissioning of this great ship, Rafael Peralta, DDG-115. It's appropriate that we remember and say thank you to the thousands of deployed sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen who, along with their families, are sacrificing every day to keep this great nation free. And to all of those veterans, especially the Marines who serve proudly with Sergeant Peralta, that are in the audience today, thank you for your service to our nation. I also want to thank our hosts here at Naval Air Station North Island Coronado and the commissioning crew who have arranged today's wonderful events, and to the many men and women responsible for the construction of Rafael Peralta. Shipbuilding is a team effort, and it takes a strong, dedicated Navy and industry team to build our nation's fleet. It takes perseverance, hard work, and attention to detail to meet every inch stone in a ship's life that gets us to today's milestone for its commissioning. To the men and women of Bath Ironworks, other industry partners, the supervisor of shipbuilding, the Navy program office, you have labored tirelessly to build this extraordinarily capable ship, and I congratulate you on another job well done. And with this commissioning, we also celebrate the namesake of this formidable ship, Sergeant Rafael Peralta. He proudly served with the 1st Marines, 1st Battalion, 3rd Marine Regiment. He was posthumously presented at the Navy Cross for extraordinary heroism for serving in Fallujah. The son of Mexican immigrants and the oldest of four, Sergeant Peralta could not wait to join the Corps and proudly serve the country that he loved. As Rafael Peralta sails the seas around the world, it will also proudly serve our country and carry the message, courageous to the end, meaning valiente hasta el final. This ship and these words will ensure the world will always remember and be inspired by the ultimate sacrifice of Sergeant Peralta, a young man who loved his family deeply and put the welfare and lives of his fellow Marines above his own. A young man who was valiente hasta el final. Much like Sergeant Peralta's undaunted courage, intrepid fighting spirit, and unwavering devotion to duty, 
This 65th Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer will honor his memory and proudly carry her namesake's legacy for many decades and over many oceans and seas as she empowers our sailors and Marines to protect our great nation. And who better to guide these men and women as they serve our great nation than this vessel sponsor, Senora Rosa Peralta. Ms. Peralta, your son was an American patriot and his last act reflected an ethos of service before self and the character of a man who was the epitome of the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. His dedication and tenacious service to our country will inspire the many officers and crew of Rafael Peralta as they sail the seas. Commander Robota, congratulations to you on your assignment as commanding officer of this fine vessel, and good luck to you, your officers, and your crew in the days ahead. We know you will serve our Navy and guide this warship in the honor of its namesake and its sponsor. And to all of you who are present today, we are indeed privileged to witness the introduction of this fine ship into our Navy. May God bless her, her crew, her sponsor, her namesake, and may God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Valdez. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Scott Peters, United States Representative, 52nd District, State of California. Good morning. Today we commission the United States USS Rafael Peralta, an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, one of the Navy's most advanced ships. This destroyer will strengthen fleet readiness as the Navy pivots toward the Asia Pacific advancing our defenses and boosting our support for our allies in the region. San Diego and Coronado, I should mention, Mayor Faulkner, Coronado, uh, play a significant, significant role in this shift to the Pacific, so it's fitting to have the USS Peralta commissioned here in her home port, where she will join the USS Vinson, the USS Roosevelt, and the myriad of other strategic assets stationed here. The USS Peralta is equipped with state-of-the-art integrated air and missile defense systems, including the new Aegis Baseline 9 combat system, which give this ship highly advanced capabilities for detecting and reacting simultaneously to modern air, surface, and submarine warfare threats. At a series of at-sea and pierside trials, she's demonstrated her warfighting readiness, and soon she will be joined by, very soon, she will be joined by 300-plus sailors who will embark with her to patrol the seas in defense of our freedoms. The Peralta is ready for combat, just as her namesake was when he stepped into battle in Fallujah 13 years ago. Marine Sergeant Rafael Peralta's tale of heroism has become emblematic of Marine valor. He was shot in the largest battle of the Iraq War, but despite his wounds, troops with him that day all say he shielded them from a grenade that would have killed them all. Sergeant Peralta is a national hero and he is a son of San Diego. He was not born here. He and his family emigrated from Mexico. Uh, he attended Morse High School, joined the Marines, became a naturalized citizen, and fought fiercely and bravely because he loved his country and ultimately gave his life for it. San Diego is the home to the largest concentration of military personnel, to the nation's largest per, uh, concentration of uh, military personnel, personnel as well as home to the nation's largest concentration of post 9-11 vets. Because of this, we San Diegans know more than most the sacrifices made by our brave men and women in uniform who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan and who still fight there today. And we know the sacrifices made by their families, including the greatest sacrifice, the one made by Rosa, Isela, Karen, Ricardo, and all of the Peralta family. Nothing can replace or ease the pain of a son or brother who's lost on the battlefield. Nothing. But please know you have the love and support of a grateful nation and a grateful city every single day. San Diego was Rafael's home. And now San Diego will be home to the ship that bears his name and honors his memory. I hope in some way that the Peralta family will take comfort in this honor. Fortis ad finem, courageous to the end. This is the lesson Sergeant Peralta taught us 
and the message the USS Peralta carries with her. As I was preparing for today, I was thinking how proud I am, how proud we all are of the role San Diego plays in our national defense, about how proud I am to represent the region and the brave military personnel who live here in the United States Congress. I was thinking that no matter how much our region and how our economy have evolved, we are at our core a proud Navy town, a proud Marine Corps town with a proud military history. These Navy ships that stand sentry in and around San Diego Bay are a constant reminder of that history and of our critical role in defending this great nation. So welcome home to the USS Peralta. We, what we wish her and all that sail upon her Godspeed, fair winds, and following seas. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Peters. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Duncan L. Hunter, representing the Honorable Duncan Hunter, United States Representative, 50th District, State of California. Okay. Good morning. Uh, you may have noticed I'm not the real Duncan Hunter, uh, but uh, Dad gets to stand in uh, for the son every now and then. But before I, I make a few remarks about uh, this extraordinary ship and the man it's named for, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Medal of Honor a winner in the front row right here, the legendary John Baca, 1st Cavalry Division, Vietnam, right here. Let's, let's appreciate him. Stand up, John. And it's so great, John, that you came here to honor Rafael Peralta. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know the story of, of how we got here. And as a dad of a Marine who fought in Fallujah, uh, the same city that, that Rafael Peralta made this extraordinary sacrifice in, I just want to tell you a little story. Uh, Duncan uh, fought with the Marines in Fallujah, came back. Uh, ran for Congress, got into Congress, and he followed Rafael Peralta's Medal of Honor nomination. And he watched it go through the Marine Corps, coming up through the Department of the Navy, and ultimately being stopped by the bureaucracy in the Pentagon. And they said, you know, our experts don't think that grenade really went off underneath Sergeant Peralta. Well, my son went out and tracked down the armored vest that Sergeant Peralta wore on that deadly day, found it in an old equipment locker, and there embedded in that armored vest was a fuse right up against his chest, the fuse of the grenade that went off that took his life. It, it was embedded there like a badge of courage. And Duncan took that back to the Pentagon and said, now tell me again how the grenade did not go off underneath. Sergeant Peralta. But they came up with a different reason not to award the Medal of Honor. So he told me one day, he said, you know, Dad, I can't make this administration give the Medal of Honor to Sergeant Peralta. But he said, I can make him name a ship after him. And so he put into the 2012 defense bill for our nation that, and I quote, the next available ship, unquote, should be named as Sergeant Rafael Peralta. Well, he, I talked to him uh, just before this, uh, this ceremony, and he gave me a message to give to all of you. I want to read it to you. He said, where does America get such men who will volunteer to leave their homes? They travel 6,000 miles into a deadly desert battlefield into a tough little town full of cement houses called Fallujah. And there, in 110 degree heat, they go in room by room and exchange machine gun fire at 15 feet with the terrorists. And sometimes they give their life for their comrades in arms and for our nation. Well, sometimes those men come from San Diego, California. And they come from a loving family 
with a mom named Rosa and brother Ricardo, sisters Isela and Karen. And they go into the Marine Corps and they keep a, a copy of the U.S. Constitution with them. And sometimes their name is Rafael Peralta. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Duncan said that it was appropriate that this ship, which is a warship, it's not a supply ship, it's not a tanker, it's a warship. He said it's appropriate that this ship was named after Rafael Peralta because Rafael Peralta represented America's warrior class. Those are the people that go out and fight in difficult places around the world so that we can be free. And he closed, Duncan closed his message to me with these words. He said, when America has no more Rafael Peraltas, we will have no more freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, he asked me to say one other thing. He, he asked me to do one other job for him here. He asked me to tell Rosa that this fight for the Medal of Honor is not over. And he said, you tell him, Dad, I've already contacted a general named Jim Mattis, who just happened to be, he just happened to be the Marine General in command of the 1st Marine Division in Fallujah. And he said, I've asked General Mattis, now Secretary of Defense Mattis, to take another look at this Medal of Honor. And he said, Dad, the Marines are going to win this one. You tell that to Rosa. God bless you. Thank you, Representative Hunter. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Daryl Issa, United States Representative, 49th District, State of California. Mrs. Peralta, it's a great honor to be asked to speak for a few moments aboard this ship. And many before me and some after me will talk about the ship, about its combat capability, about the kinetic power that it represents. But I'd like to have the opportunity to speak to those sailors, non-commissioned officers, commissioned officers that will board this ship shortly. This is a ship of war that brings kinetic power to the enemy. But Raphael, was not, in fact, just about kinetic power. He died firing and being fired at. But he lived as a statement to the world of what the United States is all about. We are not engaged just in a war of bullets. We, for years, have been engaged in a war of ideas. Raphael was only seven months old when a group of young, quote, students took our embassy in Tehran and held it for a thousand days, or enough days. The fact is, he was still a Mexican citizen through much of that time in which fundamentalism grew and began to be seen around the world and on our shores. And it was in that post 9-11 period that a young Mexican-American, not yet a citizen, but legally able to enlist, enlisted and took his ideas of what made the United States of America special into our armed forces. He believed in freedom. He believed in serving to help maintain freedom for our country and for the world. So when you sail around the world and you enter ports around the world and you exit this ship, hopefully for well-deserved liberty, you're about the ideas that you stand for, that in fact, Raphael was all about. So as Americans, we are engaged in a war of ideas and we have not yet won that war, that war that is older than the 25 years 
of this now brave deceased sergeant. So I would hope that we take away, not that we were aboard a ship or that we had the honor to see great American fighting power, but that each one of you go to sea knowing that you're part of an idea that he died for, that he lived by, that he was not an American by birth, but an American by choice. And in fact, making the world American ideas by choice is what will make the world free as we in the United States have been for 241 years. We honor him today. We do honor all of you that will go in harm's way just as he did. Thank you and God bless this great nation. Thank you, Representative Isom. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Susan Davis, United States Representative, 53rd District, State of California. Thank you, thank you, Commander, and good morning to all of you. As everyone here today has heard so far, the commissioning of this ship and its deployment, joining the world's most powerful Navy here in the world's most supportive Navy community is a remarkable achievement. I am so honored and humbled to be here with all of you today celebrating this major achievement. We know how important this day is by the outpouring of support from our community for a true San Diegan, so reflective of our community and of our values. To the Peralta family, to his mother, Rosa, sisters and brother, Isela, Karen, and Ricardo, and to all of the family that have traveled here, your presence strengthens all of us. How meaningful an occasion to be celebrating Raphael's memory today. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of my colleague, Congressman Duncan D. Hunter, the real, the real one over there, because I know that he has worked tirelessly year after year to ensure Sergeant Peralta is appropriately honored and recognized. Sergeant Peralta's life was a demonstration of courage and selflessness. Having fought so hard to be a U.S. citizen, he sacrificed himself for his fellow Marines and the country he embraced as his own. To all those here today, and in his words, in a letter encouraging his brother, be proud of being an American. To all of you in Raphael's family, and I know Rosa and the children, I'll call them children, Rosa, is that okay? Watched the building of this ship from the ground up. They watched it from the beginning and they were there for many phases. So we know that this is very much a part of you. To you, your termination, determination and sacrifice reflects his character. While he made a split-second decision, you live with that sacrifice today. We know that you served, I believe, all of our families also serve. You serve that, you have that burden, however proud, but it is a part of you, the love for your son and your brother always. For all of those who will serve on this magnificent ship and those who are aware globally of its forward presence, securing our freedom, the name and accomplishments of its namesake. 
Rafael Peralta will be a source of living inspiration. Thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you, Representative Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Nora Tyson, United States Navy, Commander, United States Third Fleet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, congressmen, mayors, General Rosa and the Peralta family. It is an incredible honor to be here this morning. It's been an honor to meet Rosa and the family over the past two days. We all know what an extraordinary man Sergeant Rafael Peralta was. And it is no surprise that a man like that came from such an incredible family. At its core, today's ceremony is not only a commissioning, but also a commendation to the family that gave us Sergeant Peralta and to the Navy, Marine Corps, and industry team who banded together to create this great ship and all she stands for. I am truly honored to join you here this morning to welcome the United States Navy's newest guided missile destroyer to United States Third Fleet. USS Rafael Peralta enters service here in San Diego and soon will be operating forward, displaying America's unwavering commitment to our allies, our partners and friends throughout the Indo-Asia Pacific region. This ship bears a proud name, and I have no doubt that the sailors who sail her over the horizon will embody Rafael Peralta's example of perseverance, toughness, and bravery as they chart her future in defense of our great nation. I know how proud San Diego is of the young man who graduated from Morse High School in 1997, enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, became an infantry rifleman with the 1st Battalion, 3rd Marine Regiment, and made the ultimate sacrifice in service to his country. Even before the second Battle of Fallujah, when he pulled a live grenade under his body to save his fellow Marines, the life of Rafael Peralta was already a great American story. He immigrated to America from Mexico as a young boy. He began serving his new country in uniform as soon as he could and earned his citizenship while serving in the Corps. Sergeant Peralta's legacy will live on in the spirit of this great ship. Wherever USS Rafael Peralta sails, it will carry the message that exemplifies her namesake, Fortis Ad Finum, or Courageous to the End. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great pleasure to introduce another courageous Marine. For more than 40 years, this man has served as an officer in the United States Marine Corps. He has led Marines at sea and ashore, at home and abroad. He has led Marines in combat, and today he serves them and their families as their commandant. He is a proven warfighter, an innovative strategist, and a genuine leader. And I am also very proud to call him a good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, our 37th Commandant of the United States Marine Corps, General Bob Neller. Well, good morning, everyone, and to our speakers and uh, distinguished guests, thanks. It's great to be up here. Um, I'm the last speaker. Do I get a round of applause for that? To the Peralta family, to Rosa Isila, Karen Ricardo, also a fellow Marine, thank you again for raising a man of character and virtue. We need more people like him uh, in our world, and it's good to see you again. The last time we met was in Bath, Maine, and it was cold. <laughs> this is much nicer. And uh, Specialist 
Baca was mentioned by Congressman Hunter. I just tell all them, all those serving today, there's a lot of veterans here, and especially for our Vietnam vets. When you see them, you need to thank them because when we go to the airport and walk around and people say thanks for your service, they made that happen because they didn't get that when they came home. So today we're gathered to commission this ship, and it's time to get on with it. Now, I had an honor of being part of the christening in October of 2015 to give the ship its name, and most importantly, the spirit of Sergeant Peralta. But to be complete, a ship requires three things. The ship, the hull, the superstructure, the weaponry, the technology. It requires a name to give it the spirit of its legacy, and it requires a crew. And when you put those three things together, you create more than just a ship. It's, well, it's, it's, a, it's a life form. And the commissioning of this ship will mark its formal acceptance into the fleet. When the hull is imbued with the spirit of its namesake and finally gains its crew and comes alive. And as we continue this ceremony, you will watch as this ship transitions from a mere hull to United States warship, sovereign U.S. territory, the USS Rafael Peralta. So as you look up at this magnificent hull, 115 on its side, Rafael Peralta on the stern, to many, this may be just another ship, but to the Peraltas, to our core, to 1-3. Where's 1-3? Okay, Senator. The Admiral says you guys are really being a pain. And I said, well, what did you expect? So I don't want to hear about it tonight, so stay out of trouble. To our Marine Corps, to our families, to the nation. This is more than just another commissioning. It marks the commemoration of a life and I say the immortality of a hero. Where the spirit of Sergeant Peralta joins the plank owners of this ship, the crew giving life to this hull, becoming one entity, one team. Sergeant Peralta's legacy and the stories been told will forever be part of this ship. All he ever wanted to be was an American, to serve his country. The love in his heart so great that those that had the privilege of knowing him felt it. It was, it was powerful. It was infectious. As a Marine, he was part of an integral team, and now this ship will perform its mission as part of a larger team, the United States Navy, and will continue to affect the lives of so many. So I know the crew knows the personal story, and our allies will see the name on the stern of this ship and ports around the world. And our adversaries, if they so wish to test, may learn the power of this ship and the spirit and competence of its crew. So in closing, I would say this. To the God above, protect this ship, but more importantly, grant the crew the will and courage to do their duty, to sail fast in harm's way. The USS Rafael Peralta, named after a warrior, a Marine, an American. And for like him, we must all remain Semper Fidelis. Thank you, General Della, for your remarks and your leadership, sir. Vice Admiral Tyson, please join me at the podium, ma'am. I would be honored if you now place Rafael Peralta in commission. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Rafael Peralta in commission. 
May God bless and guide this worship and all who shall sail in her. XO, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Rafael Peralta, Aten, Hut. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying over USS Rafael Peralta. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders from Chief of Naval Personnel to Commander Brian Rabot, United States Navy. Bureau of Naval Personnel, order number 1574 of 05 June 2014. When directed, detach USS Blue Ridge and proceed to pre-commissioning unit Rafael Peralta for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS Rafael Peralta, report as commanding officer. Vice Admiral Tyson, USS Rafael Peralta is in commission and I am in command. XO, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer Deck, set the first watch. Aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship and her crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have Mr. Ricardo Peralta here today to assist in setting our first watch. He will pass our ship's long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Chase Alvord from San Diego, California. Our petty officer of the watch is sonar technician first class, Johnny Gillum from Franklin, Georgia. Our messenger of the watch is logistics specialist third class, Dean Cicciari from North Babylon, New York. Our bosun mate of the watch is bosun mate first class, Jesus Hernandez from Tulare, California. Set the watch. On deck, section one. Aye. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Rosa Maria Peralta, here with us today. Ms. Peralta christened the ship in Bath, Maine on October 31st, 2015. Ms. Peralta, I would be honored if you would join me and give her the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Oh, offices in group, the USS Rafael Peralta may Men or ship and bring to your life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Rafael Peralta salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Ready? Two. Thank you to the warriors of VMM 363 and Lucky Red Lions for that amazing flyover. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Rafael Peralta is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Bretz, Rafael Peralta is manned and ready. Reports for duty, Desron 31, sir. General Neller, request permission to break your flag, sir. Thank you, sir. XO, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps is flying over USS Rafael Peralta. Very well. Good morning. Rafael Peralta, parade, rest. Congressman Davis, Congressman Issa, Congressman Hunter, Congressman Peters, Mayor Faulkner, Jeremy Naylor, Caparata, Admiral Roden, Tyson Galinas, Ms. Valdez, all flag and general officers in attended, active and retired. Captains, fellow commanding officers, sea cadets, uh, our future Navy, the Marines that served with Sergeant Rafael Peralta, friends, family, and guests, Rosa, Isela, Ricardo, Karen, and the rest of the Peralta family, thank you all for joining us today. You honor with our presence. And one last person is here for us today, just three miles away on Fort Rosencrantz, where he was buried. Sergeant Rafael Peralta has the overwatch and always will, and we will always render honors coming in and out of port to our great uh, Port of San Diego. And what a beautiful San Diego day. We are so blessed. Built in the best shipyard in our country, home ported in America's finest city, and have the absolutely best crew in the United States Navy. Seems like only yesterday, we were celebrating the christening of this great ship in Bath, Maine, where yes, General, it was a little chilly. And Rosa swung for the fences, officially naming her Rafael Peralta. Since we moved aboard on the uh, 3rd of February earlier this year, your sailors have accomplished numerous inspections, evolutions, certifications, and details. On our first day of uh, 28 April of this year, uh, half of the crew had never been to sea. And we got to, got to flawlessly execute a low visibility transit uh, to Newport, Rhode Island. It felt as though it was back on a submarine uh, where we couldn't even see the bow and relied on completely instruments and gauges. Just four more days at sea, and they were 150 feet away from an oiler at 15 miles an hour, taking on 200,000 gallons of fuel. Just five days after that, they shot six torpedoes, vectored in a helicopter to launch another torpedo, and shot a vertically launched ASROC. Continue our journey, we went through the Panama Canal, did our first two foreign port visits. In a total, in less than three months from moving aboard, they flawlessly sailed this 9,200-ton Greyhound over 6,000 miles to get here to San Diego. We have all come a long way in a very short time. Today, we close that chapter in her young life as we completed our first mission of bringing her to life. We now begin the journey to becoming the most capable and well-trained crew that will take her into harm's way to fill our oath to the Constitution of supporting and defending it. 
the sailors before you, their mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, daughters, and sons, and they are truly amazing. They hail from all corners of our great nation, and their enthusiasm, tenacity, and fighting spirit will power this ship for the next four decades. This great ship built by Bath Ironworks is worth nothing without them, and I will ensure they are ready for whatever tasking we receive in the future. We will endeavor to carry on Sergeant Peralta's legacy to all corners of the globe while conducting all of our warfare areas. Whether you're shooting down the missiles of an angry rotund child with anger management issues, <laughs> while conducting ballistic missile defense, or providing humanitarian assistance to people in need in a far off land. We will tackle our mission with the same dedication, selflessness, and patriotism as your son, Sergeant Rafael Peralta. None of our accomplishments to date could have been completed without the love and support of those who got us here. Thank you to our mothers and fathers for raising us, our spouses for keeping us grounded, and our children for keep it, giving us the fuel to keep our country safe. I personally owe an immeasurable debt to, of gratitude to my own family. Thank you, Mom, ha, for always being there for me, even when we didn't deserve it. Uh, to my brothers for the beatdowns I received when I was little, they only made me stronger. To my beautiful wife, Jenny, for all the sacrifices you made <laughs> Woo. over the last 21 years. There's no crying in baseball, Admiral. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I definitely would not be here up on the podium without you. And to my daughter, Jillian, thank you for being the best kiddo on the planet. <laughs> you inspire me to do better every day. Thank you all for joining us for this special day. May God bless you all, the sailors of the Marines, the United States Navy, and the United States Marine Corps. And may God continue to bless our great nation. Thank you. Ship's Company, hut head, hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for a final tribute to our ship's namesake, Sergeant Rafael Peralta, followed by the benediction, which will be offered by Chaplain Fleming. others, our safety and well-being rest in your providence. May we turn our hearts toward you each day, and may the days we live be for your glory, and may the impact of others fall of eternity. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Fleming. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests.
ladies and gentlemen, we ask that the Lava Dogs of the 1-3 who served with Sergeant Peralta proceed to the aft brow to join members of the Peralta family where we are honored to give you the first tour. The USS Rafael Peralta Commissioning Committee invites you to a reception located by the gate you entered through this morning directly to your right, or you may exit now by the same means as you entered today. If you desire a tour of the ship, once the ship is ready to receive visitors, USS Rafael Peralta crew members will guide you to come aboard. The line will begin in approximately 15 minutes. We were honored by your presence today and thank you for your support of our Navy and nation. This concludes our ceremony. Ship's Company, Lava Dogs, on three. One, two, three. Lava Dogs! Dismissed.